hey guys welcome back to my channel this is Sharani today I'm going to show you how to make a very highly highly requested video Belizean cassava cake okay so here I have two pounds of fresh cassava or some people know it as yuca or yucca I'm not sure how you say it like that but we know it as cassava I just want to wait so you can see exactly how much I'm using. As always, I'm going to have the exact measurements in the description box below for you. Sometimes people don't know to look for the measurements, but it's always there. I always have all measurements for all my videos in the description box of each video. As you can see on the scale, it says 2 pounds and 7.5 ounce, almost 2.5 pounds. So that's what I'm using for this recipe. To peel the cassava, I'm going to cut off both ends and then I'm going to cut that in half. That way it will be easier for me to handle. Now I'm going to take my knife and cut a slit in it and just rock the knife back and forth just to get under the skin a little bit so I can peel it. And please be very careful, don't cut your hands when you're doing this. But I'm used to this, I grew up eating cassava, we had a lot of cassava trees in the yard. So that's something I'm used to, so I know how to work with it. But please be very careful if you've never done this before. If you're working with a fresh cassava, it will be so easy to peel. But sometimes the cassava we get here, they're old and they've been in the store for a long time. So sometimes it's so dry and so hard to peel. So I just try to do sections like this. That way it's easier for me to peel. And you just want to try to get under the skin. If you like rock the knife back and forth, it will kind of loosen up the skin to get under it so you can peel it off. I find that when buying cassava here in the States, it's better if I get the smaller ones because they're easier to peel and they're softer. The bigger ones, they're always so hard and so dry. I mean, rarely you'll get a nice soft one. As you can see, I'm cutting off a lot of the cassava, but those pieces are not good. They look stringy, for lack of a better word, but I don't want that piece. I want it to look clean and pretty. So when buying your cassava, you always want to buy extra because sometimes you'll have to throw away a whole cassava because it's not good. So always buy an extra pound or so. Or buy more, I mean, you know, cassava lasts a long time, but always buy extra. As you can see, this piece just peeled right off. Oh my goodness, I wish all of them were like this, but they weren't. And look, this next one peels so easy. Oh my goodness. Oh, I wish they were all like this. If you haven't been following me on Instagram yet, you can do so at Cooking with Sharani. I'm always sharing stuff in my stories over there, so come follow me. I'm always active on Instagram. I'm always sharing stuff. 
and if you ever message me i'll message you back if you have a question if you want to send in pictures of the food you create you can send me it on instagram or on my facebook at cooking with shirani either one but i'll always answer you I'm going to take these to the sink because I want to rinse them off before I use them. I want to weigh them again so you can see how much I got. Okay, it's one pound and 12.9 ounce. It's not quite two pounds. Because I want to give you the exact measurements for two pounds, I'm going to peel another cassava just so I can get my two pounds. Whatever I have left over, I'm going to put it in a bag and put it in the freezer. And I'm going to put it in some soup later on because I love cassava in soup. I came up with this because I was like, well, they sell frozen cassava in a bag at the store. So why not freeze my own cassava? So I don't mind if I have any left over. I'll just put them in a bag and put it in the freezer for when I'm ready for it. I love cassava. I could eat cassava every day. <laughs> I know I say that about a lot of things, but I love cassava. It's like potato, you know. If you love potato, you'll love cassava. And you know how much I love potato. I love cassava in soups. I love it fried. Oh my gosh, there's nothing like a nice piece of fried cassava oh I have a video up on how to make fried cassava you gotta check it out it's got over a hundred thousand views I can't believe it but yeah I'm going to leave it linked below if you're interested but I love fried cassava okay I'm going to wait this one more time so you can see Okay, this last piece is what I needed to make the two pounds. And I don't mind about that. It's a little bit over, but I don't mind. So this piece that's left over, this is what I'm going to put in the freezer. I know it looks like nothing, but I have more cassava, so it's gonna add up. Okay, so the way you usually grate the cassava to make the cassava cake is with a grater like this. You just take it and you grate it on this side. And you just do that, but that's a lot of work. So I came up with an easier way to do it. When I was testing this recipe, I was doing it like that and my hand may get tired. My hand may get broke. I said, mm mm, me not to do this. I did put this in my blender. So, because I'm putting it in my blender, I need to cut it into small pieces. What you'll want to do is cut the piece in half and then cut that in half, and you'll see a string in the middle, and you're going to cut that out. If the cassava is older and it's hard, the string is going to be really hard. But because this one is kind of soft, you can't really see it. So yeah, it's not that hard, but I like to cut it out. Now I'm just going to line them up and cut them and 
you don't have to cut them too too small but just small enough you know and I have a powerful blender so I'm not really worried about it I'm not promoting my blender or anything but I've had this blender for years and we bought it refurbished it wasn't new out of the box but it's kind of pricey to begin with and even refurbished it was still pricey but it's so worth it because you can do wonders with it and i do a lot with it and i use it every day not every day but you know and i've never had a problem with it so it's so worth it it's the best money i've spent this thing could blend things like nobody business i tell you i just love this blender my husband don't care about it as much as I do. He says it's noisy. I'm like, I don't even hear a thing because it works so good. I don't hear anything. <laughs> but really and truly, this makes it so much easier to make cassava cake like this. I'm telling you, you'll never go back to grating it because Grating it is a lot of work. Your arms get tired, you grate your finger. I mean, it's a lot of work. You don't even want to make a cassava cake when you think about the grater cassava. But like this in the blender, I didn't even feel a thing. I mean, it's so good to do it in the blender. I learned about doing it in the blender from my friend Esther because when we get together, she's the one that's always making cassava cake. And we used to grate it, you know, with the grater. But then one day she decided to do it in the blender. And it came out really good. So nobody grate cassava again. When I was working on this recipe, I got a lot of good tips from my friends Sham and Esther and my cousin Melissa. Oh my goodness. I told them this cassava cake is ours because they gave me a lot of good tips. <laughs> so I just want to say thanks to Uno ladies. Thanks gal. I love Uno and because of Uno my cassava cake come out good. You know us Belizeans we never have recipes for anything. And my mom left me with a lot of recipes, but it's more like her American style recipes that she liked. And for the Belizean ones, she didn't even have any measurements. She just had ingredients. And some of them, I just go from what I remember. I messaged my cousin Melissa and asked her how to make cassava cake because I know that in her family they cook the same like the way my mom did. I just wanted to confirm with her because I couldn't remember how my mom made cassava cake and when I was looking up cassava cake recipe there are a lot of recipes out there but none of the recipes looked like what I remember my mom doing. So Melissa she told me and I was like oh my gosh that just confirmed everything because I think that's how my mom made it and then you guys I looked in the cookbook that she made me a lot of you who have been following me will know about this cookbook and I found the recipe in there and I couldn't believe it and it was exactly what Melissa told me so thanks again gal Mel you just confirm everything I was like just tell me what you put in it and I'll come up with the measurements <laughs> And then I found my mom's recipe and she didn't even have any measurements as usual. So I had to come up with the measurements for you guys. But oh my gosh, I made a lot of cassava cake. <laughs> and I have a lot of cassava cake in the freezer. Okay, now that I have the cassava all cut up, I'm going to add some coconut milk to it. I'm using two cans of coconut milk, but I'm adding one can at a time. And I'm only adding one can at first because I want to pulse it, so that's why I'm doing that. 
I don't want to go straight into turning on the blender just blending it I want to pause it so I could chop it up a little bit first before I blend it that will just make it easier on the blender I just pulse it until I can't see any of the big pieces and then I stop it and then add the other can of coconut milk Okay, it's just how I like it. Now I'm going to add the other can of milk and now I'm going to blend it. I'm using the smoothest setting on my blender, but like I said, my blender is very powerful. So this will blend for one minute. But if you're not using a powerful blender, you might want to blend it more than that. I'm just going to pour this into a big bowl and then I'm going to add the other ingredients to it. Okay, my mom's recipe asks for brown sugar, so I'm using this pure cane sugar here. This is a white sugar, but to me this tastes the closest to the brown sugar in Belize. I'm adding two and a quarter cups to that. I know a lot of Belizeans that live in the States use my recipes, and as you know the white sugar and brown sugar here don't look like the one in Belize. I'm adding 4 tablespoons of melted margarine, 2 teaspoons of vanilla, and 2 teaspoons of nutmeg. Mix this really well until everything is well combined. If you've noticed, I use margarine in this recipe and not butter. And the reason I use margarine is because that would be authentic to the Belizean recipe. That's what's available in most places. That's what everybody use. And yeah, so I just wanted to keep it that way. And I know only Belizeans get this, but we call margarine butter. <laughs> so in other words, we use butter. <laughs> People like say, oh my gosh, that's not butter. Well, you know, if you live that Belize, you call it butter. And you can't tell we nothing because that's a butter. <laughs> After you mix everything together, you're going to let it sit on the counter for 10 minutes. And I learned this from my cousin Melissa. She says, when you let it sit, it makes it taste even better. So I'm doing it. Okay, I'm going to put this in my pan that I grease and make sure you grease it really well because you don't want it to stick. And I like using the cooking spray that works for me. So that's what I always use. By the way, this is a 13 inch by nine inch pan. Bake this in a preheated 350 degrees Fahrenheit oven for 1 hour and 45 minutes. For those of you who are new to my channel and don't know, my mom passed away 10 years ago. I can't believe it's been 10 years and i've healed so much i talk about her in previous videos and when i talk about her i was always crying but now it's been 10 years and i've learned to live with it i'm in a much better place now but it took me 10 years to get to this place so 
I don't cry anymore when I talk about her. I mean, I still do, but it's not like before. But anyway, when I was younger, she made a cookbook for me and one for my sister. And it's very special to me. I've had it and I don't want to ever get rid of it. But it's falling apart. But in this cookbook, I have a lot of her favorite recipes. And I just love this book so much, but I couldn't believe it when I found cassava cake in it. I haven't looked in this book for a long time, and I couldn't believe it when I found my cassava cake recipe. Of course, I didn't have measurements. But I have the sweetest Lee Ma, and I miss her so much, and I miss my sister so much. And I know they're together watching over me. And I said I don't cry anymore. <laughs> I was doing so good. But, you know, I know they were laughing at me trying to figure out this recipe. But I think they're going to be very proud. Okay, well now it's nice and brown, just how I like it. And I'm going to let this cool down overnight. This was very late when I finished with it, so I'm going to let it cool down overnight. Because if you cut a cassava cake when it's hot, it's not going to be good. You have to let it cool down. My cousin Melissa also taught me that to know when the cassava cake is brown and finished is... If the edges are brown, that means the bottom is brown. And I didn't know that. I've seen some cassava cake with some topping, but I don't know how to make it like that. And I didn't grow up with it like that. This is how I know cassava cake to be. This is how my mom would make it. Oh my gosh, this was so, so good. Just as how I remember cassava cake the taste. And the edge was just as nice and brown as how I like it. I mean, if it was up to me, I think I would just cut off all the edge and eat the edge because it was so crispy and so good. Oh my gosh, Javi and I were fighting over the edge. <laughs> And it has that stretch, just like how cassava cake's supposed to be stretchy. And if it's warm or hot, it's going to be even more stretchy. Oh my gosh. I love cassava cake. And if you know anything about cassava cake, when you put it in your mouth, it kind of sticks to your gum, like that gummy feeling. Oh my gosh. Cassava cake is the bomb. And make sure you brown your cassava cake because the browner it is, the nicer it is. I told you that I have cassava cake in my freezer. So if you want to freeze yours, what you'll want to do is portion it off and wrap it in plastic wrap. And then put it in a freezer bag. And make sure you put the date on it. I think it stays fresh for up to 3 months. After that, it starts to taste old, so I don't really like it after that, but up to three months is the best amount of time to keep it in there. And when you're ready for it, just take one piece out and let it out on the counter, and then you pop it in the microwave to warm it up a bit after that, and it's, oh my gosh, it will taste like you just made it. I know I already talked about putting the cassava cake in the microwave, but oh my gosh, you guys, I just discovered something. So I had to come back in and share it with you. So I decided to put my cassava cake in the air fryer just to see what that would do to it. 
And let me tell you, that thing crisp at the edges, like nobody's business. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And that's what I like about my cassava cake. So if you put it in a microwave, the edges won't be crispy. But if you put it in the air fryer, that will crisp it up. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this one. I'm sorry it took me so long to put out this recipe, but I really hope you give it a try. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't yet subscribed, please don't forget to do that. And I'll talk to you in my next one. Take care. Bye.